Welcome, welcome very much to Conversations. A pleasure to welcome to the program. Bakari Page, we've done program, uh, Pace, we've done programming with in the past, and I'm glad to see that we're going to be able to do another follow-up program with him to talk about his life a bit, and then also to talk about his life as a member of the Zeitgeist Movement, a movement that I, in my per humble opinion, and the opinion of many others, is a major significant systems look at the evolution of events on planet Earth. It's a very important movement, and he's very familiar with it, involved in it. And uh, Bakari said, welcome so much again to Conversation. Oh, thank you. Good to see you and everything. Uh, we've done it in a past program. Maybe you can share a little bit in a bio kind of way, your background. I know you're out of Atlanta and so mm -hmm. forth. Share your own back. Born and raised, educate a little bit. And then we, let's share with the audience yeah. the importance of the, of the Zeitgeist movement of which you are a part. Sure. Okay. Uh, so I was born in Brooklyn. Um, I was there for roughly like two weeks. And then my mother took me to Connecticut. I lived in Connecticut. For the majority of my life, I lived there for uh, until I was 10 years old. Uh -huh. um, when I was 10 years old, I met my father for the first time, actually. Uh -huh. And um, you know, we moved uh, to Queens. I lived in Queens for about three to four years. Okay. Um, and then after that, I moved back to Connecticut, and I lived in a sort of dual relationship between, uh, dual partnership between my mother and my father at that point. Oh, and I would see. go back and forth between New York and Connecticut. Gosh, we um, could do a whole program on that. Yeah, I mean, that I've could done. be a whole movie. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my yeah. life has been. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. Up until 18, my life has been pretty hectic. I've yeah. done uh, the foster care thing. I've yeah. done. Uh, group home thing. All I've been in all parts of the American, you know, child care system. Okay, I've been it's all very throughout good it. you have. We could talk yeah. some on that, and it's um, worthwhile talking about yeah. because it's it's it, it characterizes a lot of people that mm -hmm. a lot of people aren't that aware of, and because it's, they what, are. The that's instant. the shocking part about yeah. it is that yeah. there's not that much to talk. There's not many people who, once they leave this experience yeah. of of going through the system, yeah actually want to discuss it or yeah. bring it up or yeah. they don't talk about right. this that part of their lives yeah. at all and, yeah. and and i recognize how how fundamental it because most people I, I talk to friends about this often like yeah. most people think of their when they think back to their childhood yeah. they have usually stationary places places where they can go yeah back that to, was me you know right? yeah. yeah most yeah, people right. think of a house right. or a building a me, dog spot exactly yeah, right um me when yeah. i think back my past three my history it's been uh, multiple different places it's yeah. been you know uh, different it, and i don't have too many people from my past who i right. can say all right this was the person who yeah. was like the, in the authority figure yeah great it, success exactly and, and yet you've achieved great intellectual and, success yeah. and everything like and i that. and that's yeah. that to me is very yeah. important to me the fact yeah. that you know despite all of these you know so-called setbacks yes i've still i've matured intellectually politically um, to, to a point where I think that I'm s relatively stable in where I yeah. where I like to see the world go towards, and at least that I have that global perspective. And, and they say in the Yiddish, Mazel Tov. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> yeah, congratulations mm -hmm. on having been able to come through that. Now, you ended up down in Atlanta for a while, and you so, went to Morehouse, Yes, right? so yeah. um, when I was 17, it's a funny story how I got even interested in I, I, My mother always told me that I was supposed to go to college. Yeah. And my church always told me that I was supposed to go to right. college. And everyone told me I was supposed to go to college. So yeah. I knew when yeah. I turned 18 that I was yeah. going to college. I didn't yeah. know where I was going to go to college, okay. but I was going to go to college. Right. And um, I think I got brought on a on a school trip to uh -huh. Central Connecticut State University. Yeah. And while I was there, I was looking around. I was looking at the prices, first of all, because yeah. I'm coming from, you know, yeah. really low income background. Well, you didn't come so, from high no. legacy funds? Or no, <laughs> nothing like that. <laughs> no big, uh, um, yeah. And yeah. But when, where I was coming from, um, I was seeing like tuition prices yeah. and housing prices. It and it would be something like $6,000. I'm here. My family would make something like fifteen to $20,000 yeah, per right. year. So yeah, the idea right. that I would be spending that type of money on, I didn't even understand the idea that you could borrow money yeah. so that you could go to college. That, okay. to me, was just bizarre okay, yeah. so when they said six thousand dollars i didn't think i was actually going to be able to go to college yeah, but yeah. when i decided that i was going to go to central uh -huh. was because i again this comes from this limited perspective yeah. i came to central uh, connecticut and uh I, they brought me to the cafeteria and uh -huh. it was a buffet yeah. and i was like a buffet a buffet <laughs> in college this is what <laughs> yeah. they're gonna have yeah. uh, this is yeah. what you have yeah. here yeah. that to me was the greatest and i used that that to me was my Never whole reason for deciding you, right? on going to central connecticut state no at, initially Boy. but I always hung out with the top 10% of my class, okay, always. Exactly. Yeah. Um, when I was at Willoughby High School, that's where I, I hung out. Most, I would sit down at, um, at, um, at lunchtime, yeah. and the valedictorian would be sitting there, the salutatorian, yeah. eventually. Yeah. Um, eventually, um, third, fifth, ninth. I was 19th at that time, yeah. and I was moving up. Yeah. Um, 
and and then I think like twentieth was is that in my an class. academic rating? Yeah, you're talking everybody about? Yeah. top ten percent yeah. in terms of the GPA in, yeah, inside right. of school, and that's yeah. who I always hung out and with. And you were learning. I yeah. mean, you 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 liked learning, or did I always you do did. It? You always do it did. at home and that kind of I stuff. I remember and read and everything. Yeah, I, yeah. No, no, no. When I I didn't. I, yeah, I, I wasn't involved with that. What okay. I what I I remember when like the world really broke open to me. In fact, yeah. like um, I was. I took a class called U.S. History and Politics okay, at Wilby, wow. and it was an AP class. My first time taking an AP, What's AP an class, AP? Um, advanced placement. Okay, now, okay. The, huh? the reason I took this class is because I hung out with the top 10% in the class yeah. while I was at Wilby, and they were all taking AP classes, okay. and I had never even known that mm -hmm. you, know, you could take those types of classes, so yeah. I took an AP course. Um, and it's like a Regents thing. And, and, yeah, probably. Okay, yeah, it's probably yeah, connected yeah. to that. I'm not mm. sure how yeah. it connects, because right, I was in right. high school that's in Connecticut, York, and yeah. that's New York. Mm. So um, when I took the AP class, that opened my eyes up to politics. It just didn't, it, to, and, to politics, politics, to the idea okay, that yeah. there were people inside mm. this world mm. who could have an argument on a floor somewhere mm. very far from wherever I was at. Mm -hmm. And it could affect me directly, uh -huh. like that tomorrow something could change just because yeah. these people had an argument right. somewhere very far away. Yeah. That blew my whole world open in right. terms of seeing the way that multiple different people played played, played around. And right. then on top of it, yeah. this was 2007. Right. Um, and and so no, this ago, is 2006, yeah. excuse Six, me. Yeah. And Barack Obama is becoming um, uh, a, a, a national figure. Yeah, right. And that affected me very, very, very profoundly. I remember I had a conversation with one of my friends. She's at Columbia Medical School, and she said, "Oh, so you were like one of those kids who, who when you found out that Barack Obama was like yeah. the pre was going to be or whatever mm -hmm. that made you that inspired you." And and she was saying it sort of comically. Yeah, yeah. But to me, that was really what well, it was. I think so. For like I, I loud, when yeah. on my on my MySpace page, there are yeah. pictures of me, mm. and uh, and I'm saying, and it is, there's a caption that says Senator Bakari Pace, uh. Senator Bakari. And the whole the only reason why I even considered like the idea of becoming said I didn't know what that meant at that mm -hmm. time especially mm -hmm. not then mm -hmm. but the whole idea was that wow look this is a black guy who yeah. is You'll ascending yeah you know yeah, this, yeah, he yeah. has that possibility yeah. that that to me and blew they open opened doors for more yeah. Yeah. yeah and especially considering his name is Barack and my yeah. name is Bakari yes that's so the, true there's yeah, the, you know the, that, yeah, the, yeah. The, the connection no, I can see what would be a huge inspiration yeah. yeah right yeah so um I met a couple guys uh well I was actually a part of this organization called Granville Academy this is still part of my sort of my background so uh -huh. I was part of this organization called Granville Academy uh -huh. and while I was there um I was introduced to a couple guys who had these really like powerful voices yeah. and they dressed impeccably like yeah. like very very clean cut all around were they associated with any particular organization? Yeah, then? they yeah. were. They were graduates of Morehouse College. All right. Yeah. Okay. And now we got to talk about Morehouse. Yeah. Today. And yeah. Um, that to me was blew my. Yeah. yeah. Everyone around me was either a rapper or had insp had aspirations to be well, like. It's good and, to have you know, that background. Yeah. It's good to have that background. Of course. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, no yeah, way am I discounting yeah. the hip hop yeah, right. community. No. It's just that that was where the limit was. Gotcha. You know, the, the gotcha. ceiling was. If I don't rap, or if I don't play basketball, yeah, or yeah. you know whatever the yeah. all the stereotypes yeah, that people right. tend to put exactly. on the hood, right. all of those were were firmly ingrained in the people who are around me, uh -huh. especially in my high school. Yeah. Um, and to meet these guys mm -hmm. who were just doing incredible stuff, which yeah. made to, to to regular viewers yeah. it may be all. Oh, he was just working at a startup. He was an yeah. entrepreneur, or yeah. oh, he was a teacher, or you know, all those types of things that yeah. most people think of as you know, limited for like either the middle class or yeah. the upper middle class. Yeah, yeah. Those things were phenomenal. Yeah, for right. for somebody who wasn't even in there, gotcha. where most of the community were on welfare or something to that effect, or being supported by welfare, or staying on welfare, right, or right. people who were you know doing aspirational things mm -hmm. but not talking about it within the community yeah. they weren't even discussing these i saw of a thing coming over in the subway tonight that half the population near the half 48 percent of the population of new york city is either poor mm -hmm. or near poor yeah yeah i mean and, a lot of people and when you're a lot of people yeah when yeah. you're and when more you're a, all the when time. you're a growing yeah. person inside of that demographic yeah there's no that no one tells yeah, you what the there's other. There's another word. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that, right, that, that, right, I remember right. uh, I was talking to this uh, professor, uh, not professor. He's this uh, entrepreneur. His name is Dr. Calvin Mackey, mm -hmm. and he brought this up. He yeah. said, uh, he, he, one time we were at this airport, and he and he opened this door, and he showed this whole, you know, it was just a, it was just a club, yeah. you know, a, a club where you could go in, get drinks, all this, yeah. all this stuff that happens. Is, but the only way for you to ever know that this club was there, uh -huh. especially if you're just some low income person yeah. who's like walking through the airport, you wouldn't even know so that was there. This is a whole nother. Yeah. And he, he said mm -hmm. it's like the main. 
matrix. Yeah, because right, it's right. there, uh-huh. but you don't see it. <laughs> yeah, you know. Right. So um, these. But these guys were all well. dressed. These guys all, all well dressed. Not just not just not just well dressed, but well spoken. Right. Very and 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 articulate. And other black people, when when you said you know, that person went to Morehouse, yeah. there was like this. This, Quiet. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. like, yeah, we, we know. Yeah, that's that's that type of guy. So when I when I heard about that school, and then all the rest of the people who were my top ten percent in my class yeah. were starting to apply for colleges, and they were going to John Hopkins, mm. UConn, Quinnipiac. Uh, mm. I, one of my friends went to Cornell. Somebody mm. from my class. Everybody was going to the to the best mm. schools in the country. Mm. Yeah. And I was deciding to go to Central Connecticut State because they had a good cafeteria. Right. Right. So of course that made me have to change my decision. You were doing a lot of learning. Yeah. yeah. I was doing a of lot of learning yeah, about right. about the world. And, yeah. and the thing was, because I came from this foster care background, yeah, right. the, the group home background, back and forth between my parents, nothing yeah. really because all of that was happening, yeah. there wasn't somebody to say, Hey, this is what the hierarchy of you know, yeah. uh, of higher education looks like. Yeah. And that if you apply to certain colleges, yeah. you're going to set yourself on a path to go somewhere different than yeah. most people are just by attending the school, not uh, merely, not even graduating, just right. attending the right, school right, will yeah. set you up to go to a different That's what place. That's like to get to Harvard Law, you yeah. know, that kind of thing and everything. But now, Morehouse, why don't so we talk I get about Morehouse? Down. I have it associated with Martin King. Uh-huh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Morehouse College. Yeah. Oh. 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 I thought you said Mo- you had your own association. No. No. Oh, no. Yes, no yes, yes. I didn't know. Martin oh, that's King. the that's the secret part. I mean, that, that, giant, I, was gonna, yeah. I was definitely going to get yeah. to Dr. King. Yeah, 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 no yeah, doubt. Yeah. So um, I applied to Morehouse. Um, a lot of people told me that oh you weren't going to get in. I got in. Yeah. They loved me. All of that. I got down to the school and. Uh, did you have? There was, yeah, did you get a scholarship? Or I got scholarships house? to other schools. I didn't get a scholarship to Morehouse. So how did um, you manage? Did you have a place to stay, or were you at a all of those, down there? Or all of those, all those all little out? nuggets for later on into the conversation. Okay, I will okay, talk to you a little okay, bit about cool, like what cool. it, what it meant for me once I got there. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Dr. King's statue is yeah, on the campus. Right. He's very, very big, important part of the Morehouse. That's what I've got a conversation with. Yeah. But there are plenty of other people who are part of it. So you have sure. names like. Uh, yeah, uh, um, David Thatcher, who's the uh, uh, Surgeon General, yeah. um, former Surgeon General of the United States. Um, you have uh, Spike Lee, Samuel yeah. Jackson, yeah. and you have, you know, Samuel Jackson. The actor? Samuel Jackson, yeah, actually. good guy. Yeah, I mean, good actor. I mean, I don't and, know. You know, I'm happy you brought yeah. him up. So yeah. he had the same challenge yeah. that I started to have intellectually yeah. um, regarding Morehouse. All right. And it was this. So Morehouse does, does a really good job at taking low-income yeah. kids, middle-class kids, and telling you to work yeah. on Morehouse for four years, yeah. and they will take you and get you a $100,000 salary, a six-figure salary, uh-huh. if you graduate. Uh-huh. I have plenty of friends who are on Wall Street. I have plenty of friends who are J.P. Morgan, no, Chase Manhattan Bank, right now. Yeah, you right, know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And, they're, and their salaries are significant. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? And these kids did not come from uh, well, you know, prestige. Yeah, yeah, these right. guys... Got an opportunity, they went to Morehouse, and this is what I was talking about before, yeah. how you, you, you touch that higher education, you hit that hierarchy, and then you yeah. soar past. Yeah, right. These guys went to Morehouse, and now they're straight. Yeah. But Samuel L. Jackson had that same problem, and you can see it reflected in his biography, it's yeah. one of the things he talks about, yeah. where it was this, there was this, uh, this, this tradition of Dr. King being spoke about, yeah. but a lot of people were going to Wall Street. Uh, as opposed to staying social yeah, and, c- and concerning yourself with the and problems political. exactly yeah, yeah, and yeah. i'm having that challenge as well yeah. saying hey you know i really int- i'm really interested in you know getting money and making money and all yeah. of that but i see dr king pointing yeah, you know, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah glory, i see him glory but, lies that yeah, way yeah. and, there's, there's and it doesn't seem to there, me yeah. that he's saying yeah. go get money oh, yeah. you know go make money it doesn't seem to me that's 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 the conversation he's trying to have with me. No, and I don't think that's the conversation of the founders at Morehouse. I don't yeah, think that's yeah. the conversation of most of the people who came there mm-hmm. under that tradition. Yeah. The, the Howard Thurmans, all of the people who well, came. Well, you had a whole damn movement that was yeah, changing the, the world. The, it was the, the civil rights, with. the yeah. civil rights, civil and rights its legacy. Yeah. I mean, it, has, it still has a legacy. Yeah. You know, a, yeah. and a lot of different people who who didn't say I'm just going to merely focus on. Uh, it, some people call it selling it out. Uh, people who are going to focus on making money. And, well, that's and then easy. coming back on the back end and saying, now that well, I have money Well, that's a lot of what they sell the college uh, thing on is because it gets a thing where you get a certificate which makes you eligible to make money. Yeah. And it's all about making money. Mm-hmm. There seems to be such a focus on that mm-hmm. that uh, it's unfortunate because there's a lot of other things to be focused yeah. on of intellectual import and mm-hmm. transformation. And and it's and not to discard yeah. the, the, the quality or the necessity for money. Like, yeah, I right. still yeah. do think that people should work and get paid for their labor. Yeah. It's just whether or not that's your 
primary goal. It is so, a very primary goal. And, and, and it seems together. to me that's, yeah. that's becoming Un the problem. Yeah, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Let's say one thing. You're relatively young. You're I'm 23. 22. 23. Oh, yeah. you had a birthday. Uh, no, no. Happy <laughs> birthday. I thought you were 22 last no, no, time no, no. we talked. Uh, I was, the last time we talked was in February. I, uh, my birthday is in July, my July 10th, actually. No, okay. Yeah, yeah. but um, I'll be 24 soon. Okay. But yeah, oh. still relatively oh. young. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, okay, good. And so Morehouse, do you like so, it? So Morehouse. Yeah. Um, so I'm still having an intellectual challenge while that's being supplemented by this financial problem that's coming because Morehouse isn't cheap. Yeah. But no colleges are cheap right yeah, now. Right. The no. colleges don't come cheap. That's yeah. not the way that the yeah. college institution is yeah. set up. It used it's, to be tuition free and It used to be. And, you know, yeah. this, and even right now, just yeah. today, yeah. just today, Cooper Union, which has been established as a free university for, I'm, yeah. I think, almost yeah. since, since its inception. Institution, yeah. And just today, it became a, a charged school. It's, it's a school that now charges tuition. Oh, boy. So okay. even, even and, and, and who, who knows who, who we point to blame? It, maybe it's not a blame thing. Yeah. It's just, wow, like education is getting to that so level. So how'd you pull it off at Morehouse? Oh, I didn't I finish mean, at Morehouse. No. I did. No. That, that, oh. I went to Morehouse, but I did not stop. I, mm. I, did, I, I stopped there, but I didn't stop intellectually. Yeah, and this yeah. is where I'm going. Uh, but did you go through and get a four-year thing? No, I didn't finish. I didn't, get didn't my, finish. I didn't get the degree. Oh, you were a student. I was there. a student at Morehouse. For how long were you a student? I was a, stu I was a student in terms of like, my attendance for about four years. Okay. But in terms, of my, um, in terms of what I got in credits, uh -huh. uh, maybe two years. Okay. So well, I you were there. You had an yeah. association so with So while, while I was at Morehouse, what I did was I either audited classes mm. or I would sit in... I would sit in paid and then at the end of the semester wouldn't have the the money to cover school so uh. boom i went and get the the credits for those yeah, for that yeah. time while i was there but you got the education yeah and that to me yeah, that to me kept a, being the important thing it said to me meat, like not the bone yeah it, yeah it seems to me yeah. like that should be the the goal is yeah. to get the get the education get the education for yourself auto there's a term autodidact yeah uh eben moglin who's a professor at columbia yeah, law he yeah. met me he said uh yeah. he said I, I admire the fact that you're a working class autodidact yeah autodidact <laughs> it's an honorable yeah. term self-taught and i and i and i i did not I did not appreciate it until roughly 2010 when I watched Zeitgeist Addendum. Now, uh, I, now okay. I, Zeitgeist okay. Addendum had this relatively the same effect um, in terms of opening my mind yeah. as uh, as watching as 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 taking the class in U.S. history. And okay, politics. good. That's good. You're self-taught. You're it's like a hound dog after a fox. Yeah. I mean, you're really going because you're really interested. That's the way I've been all my mm -hmm. life. I, I believe in that, and I think it's really important. Rather than being outer directed, you mm -hmm. got an inner thing that you go. And when you're going after something on your own, mm -hmm. that's when you really learn. It yeah. seems to me really well. So congratulations on that. Now you've introduced uh, ah, Zeitgeist to mm -hmm. Zeitgeist, maybe mm -hmm. to a number of the people viewing. Let's talk and focus sure. on that because that's become an important part of your mm -hmm. intellectual focus, right? It's interesting and it's to me. It's a major movement. It's interesting to me how many people come to me and say, "Hey, Bakari, uh, how are you?" Yeah. And uh, how's this, how's that movement that you're a part of? <laughs> it's always it's always interesting yeah. because I have a lot of friends who are who do identify themselves as members of the movement, and uh, and they tend to be evangelizing in terms of they're always walking up to somebody. I very rarely bring it up in regular conversation. But no, but people let's bring it up here now because it. we have but I'm the happy, obligation to educate this is, the public that's not aware this is of how the, important it really is. To me, this is the Without, form where you do it. You yeah. do it in the forms that that bring the prestige that's necessary to yeah. the idea, because the idea isn't some, you know, flea bag idea. Yeah, right. To me, this is what 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 really touches the fundamentals yeah. of society. It touches the fundamentals of economy, and mm. it and asks the fundamental questions. Yeah. And that, to me, hasn't been really been happening. So I think, let's share so with yes, the audience about it. viewing so, here what it is, who it is. There's Jacques, the guy down okay, there, got so, started. When to get started? What is it? And it's a thing for autodidacts particularly to be able to get involved in terms of a large systems way of thinking mm -hmm. about things very comprehensively. Mm -hmm. So I would, say, yeah. I would say that the tradition started, the, the, the traditional idea, like the, the, the idea really comes down to looking at the world and mm -hmm. saying that there are limits to the growth. Okay. There are limits to what human beings can do and can't do on this planet. Okay. And we have to respect those boundaries. Mm -hmm. If we don't respect those boundaries, mm -hmm. there's going to be challenges that are going to come as a result of it. Right. But there could be really catastrophic mm -hmm. challenges that could come if we're, Absolutely. If we're cavalier in a now, way. If, I mean, humanity. Yeah. Now, the idea isn't that we conserve in, mm -hmm. the, in, a, in, a, in the sort of bare necessity subsistence level thinking that comes, and comes into mind when you use that type of word. Yeah. Because there's an abundance that can exist uh -huh. for the entire planet. Uh -huh. 
relative for every individual who's yeah. on it. Meaning, yeah. uh, in terms of name dropping, uh, he, uh, Peter Diamandis, his book just came out called yeah. Abundance. Abundance. Uh, yeah. um, the the future is better. Yeah, yeah. Have the book? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Are you into it? Is it good? You it's say, very like, good. It? Um, one of my good friends, yeah. Federico Pistono, he's selling uh, like hotcakes. He's a student of Peter Diamandis, who yeah. one who brought who introduced me to the book. Okay. Um, so. There's abundance that exists within those limits. Well, there's an abundance that, well, okay, now that's an interesting thing mm -hmm. to think about historically. Has there always been? Mm -hmm. Or is it because of technological developments making a world different than we've come out of history it's with? It's definitely and driven by technology. Technology okay, has okay. driven almost every revolution that we've been in yeah. ever since. Yeah. Um, and understanding and utilizing technological capabilities yeah. and applying those within the framework of the limits that exist. Well, that brings in ecology, I would say. Brings think. in ecology. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and that's the thing. You have yeah. to understand what the, the subtle illusions are when we talk about these topics. Yeah. Because these topics touch so many different ones that we've come to accept without realizing the right. ramifications that they have yeah. on Just society itself. Almost. Subliminally, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you have sociology. Uh, I think uh, Peter Joseph, who's the, yeah. um, who's the director very... of the... Uh, of the of, the director of the film series, which yeah. inspired the Zeitgeist movement, yeah. uh, he talks. He says that the problem is psychological, right. that which then makes it sociological. Uh -huh. You know, okay. the problem of not thinking long term, right. recognizing that the limits are there, and then yeah. realigning yourself with the the natural balance that has to be exist between ecology and oh. economics. Understanding yeah. that economics, the word itself, breaks itself down into taking care of your household, the yeah. management of a household, that's right. the Greek root of the word. So you so, can get, try to get to an operating manual for Spaceship Earth. Yeah. And to think systems. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, because it's, it's of the moment. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a thing of this moment that is maybe making a break with history. Mm -hmm. Because the historical context has been one, uh, well, of uh, suffered scarcity on the part of a whole lot of the homo sapiens species and a lot of other species and so forth. And we're coming to a major point of transformation, maybe even on to beyond just politics and everything, mm -hmm. but on to uh, uh, the end of uh, a long sojourn of the homo sapiens species. Mm -hmm. We're coming to a major moment of transformation, yeah. almost uh, in, in evolutionary mm -hmm. terms. Kurzweil talks about this, this Ray change, does, yeah, this Kurzweil. change that's gonna that that this the acceleration. He calls it the singularity. Yeah. He says the, those 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 terms. I hope that it just be, that it becomes a consciousness thing. Yeah, and that we really do start to adopt some of the uh, and we physically adopt the the yeah. the things that. Jesus Christ was talking about well, things yeah. that Gandhi was talking about, the things that King was talking about. Some of the major uh, moral leaders who ask the questions of how do we take care of ourselves, take care of each right. other, right. and doing and and now having the capability of doing that. One and question, that to me is one important. question there, particularly bringing up Jesus that's yeah. two thousand years ago, mm -hmm. and that's important and everything like that. But, but the kind of thing that we're talking about and talking about technology <clears throat> is a thing that could you you. Uh, I had a friend, I'll take it a little bit off key, but I had a friend I was with the other day, I referred to it, he, he, he had a quote of Cervantes, mm -hmm. right, a great Spanish writer, and uh, he said, there are only two classes, if you talk about classes, mm -hmm. there's the haves mm -hmm. and the have-nots. Mm -hmm. Now that's an interesting thing to do, you can mm -hmm. put on a chart or something yeah. like that. What does it mean to be a have? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be a have-not? And what are the trends in terms of technology's uh, ability to provide life support for the homo sapien species within intellectual, within an ecological context mm -hmm. that is available to us now mm -hmm. that was not available 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, they didn't have but just bare necessities that were mm -hmm. available and everything. So the historical context was one in which the realization of a transformation like we're contemplating now could not have been, in my way of thinking, any time in the past, anything like on a qualitative scale is equal to one that we are facing in this moment that we were born into, that this is a unique moment compared mm -hmm. to all of human history. Does that make any sense to you or not? To some degree. Can you expound a little bit for us? Well, I'm just saying there was no way that you could have a singularity or you could have a transformation of, <clears throat> let's say, transcending within ecological limits and mm -hmm. context. Uh, the ironclad laws of scarcity is yeah. not enough. Yeah. If there's not enough, and that's an assumption, for you to win, I have to lose. Mm -hmm. For her to win, she has to lose, yeah. and all that kind of thing. 
and that we may be transcending that. And it couldn't have been characteristic mm -hmm. because it depends upon this exponential increasing yeah. capability, technological extension of consciousness mm -hmm. <coughs> that makes possible building a world of abundance for all. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, like, that's a good I point. think somebody should write a book so called a, <laughs> Enough for All Forever. And I think time. that's a really uh, good point. That's a really understand? good point. But it couldn't yeah. have been characteristic of any time in history mm -hmm. in the qualitative, not quantitative, yeah. historical trend, qualitative transformation characteristic of the moment that we've been born into. Me at the as a beginning global, of it. As a global and you species, more you're absolutely right. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right. Okay. Now, there have been certain societies that have existed in egalitarian perspectives that have that that respected their limits, respected the ecological limits that they had, and still provided for, you know, the bare necessities plus more for the individuals that exist in society. They but they could only they couldn't, but they couldn't, they couldn't do, do it for the DNA. Entire. They didn't know DNA. They didn't yeah. know the, uh, the things that we know now mm -hmm. were just being inundated with yeah. new information all the time and mm -hmm. like a quickening within a pregnancy. Mm -hmm. or something. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I think that on the on a global scale, yeah. you're absolutely right. I think and that even cosmic it's, it's scale. where we're finally getting to that place where that and that's why I brought up figures like Jesus and others who have talked about it on a global scale. Well they level. were talking so, about justice and morality and that sort of thing within a context that was very limited. And it was impossible to yeah. accomplish those things. You couldn't have done yeah. it in the 18th because, century, because the, 19th century. Because the, century. the raw materials may yeah. not have necessarily It was a process been through yeah. time. With, along with the technology. Was, and the process through time, like one of the charts that was done by some systems thinkers that yeah, are similar fuller, uh -huh. to Fresca and all that was Fuller. Yeah. And Fuller had a chart where he was measuring the percentage of the world population mm -hmm. that could be seen to be half in terms of capability yeah. that was emerging. And he just had it coming into the 20th century. 10% mm -hmm. of the world population by mm -hmm. First World War, 20% by mm -hmm. the second. He made a projection out from 200, 1952 saying that about 20 years out from there, we were going to cross the 50% mark on the percentage of the world population mm -hmm. that can be seen to be a have, mm -hmm. as opposed to a have not. We we're going to cross the 50% mark. We said we lived out his life thinking that was about 1970. Yeah. We were actually transcending the ironclad laws of scarcity and getting to a world of uh, abundance within an ecological context for the first time that never could have been characteristic of 200,000 years of our existence. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm, so course. this is a unique moment. Mm -hmm. And that's the point I'm now trying to make. And I think that the, the Zeitgeist movement is keyed into that important technological liaison with mm -hmm. this particular time as opposed to all of human history. Now, the one, the, the major thing that's character, it's probably best for me to, to despookify some of these these, these words. Please so the do, do. I did the, the, the first word, the Zeitgeist, and the word... Uh, the word movement. So zeitgeist itself means spirit of the means age. Spirit of the age, right? Yeah. So it's funny that I use the word despookify when you no, <laughs> when like you're it. talking about. I like it. I like it. When you're it talking about a spook. A rap song. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, the spirit of the times. Yeah. Um, it and what it really what it what it really keys into is what the cultural acceptance, the cultural yeah. memes that yeah. define our time. Yeah. The, uh, the memes, yeah. the political memes that define yeah. our times. What yes. are what are the national conversations that are te that generally accepted by most of the people in most of the people in whatever the culture and is? Remember this historical lag. Where you've mm -hmm. got reified institutions that people are related to. Exactly. Right. So all of these things yeah. are a member of the zeitgeist, and that's right. and that's a good word from Ger from Germany yeah. that really captures yeah. this full encompassing idea. It's not mm -hmm. merely culture. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not merely political. It's yeah. also social. It's social relationships. I brought this up one time to somebody I said uh, I said a part of the zeitgeist is something like this the concept of you and I yeah or me and you yeah. or us against them right you familiar that, with Martin that, Buber no I'm not he made the distinction between I thou and I it relationships mm -hmm. between entities mm -hmm. I thou was a more uh, you know he was a major I, I just brought it I'll up look him up yeah. so um, Martin Buber a the, Jewish uh, guy yeah Martin a major philosopher yeah so the uh, the the us against them idea, right? Yeah. That's just okay. a, that's an idea that exists. Yeah, yeah. And that's oh a part, yeah, Under that's a part of, of the zeitgeist. Just the mere like yeah. somebody thought, oh, we you talking about just me? No, no, no. I'm talking about the idea that there's yeah. a separation, yeah. and that that division yeah. is embedded into the zeitgeist. It's yeah. not a cultural idea, yeah. you know. It's not merely accepted in you know the American culture or the Jewish culture right. or the Black culture yeah, yeah. or the hip hop culture. Right. If you want to bring it smaller yeah. or yeah. in rock culture, yeah. it's not that. It's it's defined globally. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Right. It's a global accept, yeah, or, accepted reality. You yeah, know? Yeah. So and it's reached, it reaches out into things. If you start thinking really systems and really comprehensive, it reaches out to the universe. Yeah. It reaches out to a universe of which we are an evolutionary part. Mm -hmm. 
And we and, can understand it intellectually in a way that we haven't been able to do historically either. We're mm -hmm. coming to know so much more yeah. all the time in a quickening kind mm -hmm. of almost coming to the end of a pregnancy kind of process mm -hmm. that may have uh, psycho uh, implications cosmically or evolutionarily, not just historically. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Closing quotes on, we were all contained, we're all African, mm -hmm. and we were all contained in Homo habilis before there was Homo sapiens species. Mm -hmm. And before that, four million years ago, there was no Homo habilis. Mm -hmm. There came along evolutionarily Homo, Homo uh, what do you call it, Australopithecine for some millions of years. Then came Homo habilis, then came Homo sapiens. And we may be coming to a liaison with something beyond what we have been in an evolutionary process in this universe, Homo, in the hope of Homo sapiens phase. Mm -hmm evolutionary qualitative transformation. It is a lot of transformations that yeah, are happening. I mean, not just a historical thing like mm -hmm. a new tax cut or a new yeah. political party or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. And that's and that touches on mm -hmm. what I mean about the zeitgeist. Yeah. So these things well, are all a part of, the, of yeah, that. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, all right. Of that. And, and, the, and the movement, the, uh, and the, the and zeitgeist the, and the, movement. And the term and movement. Touched into that. The term movement implies merely change. Yeah, but that also that thing about more cosmic and all that, that is more systemic. Mm -hmm. Systematic and comprehensive thinking about things that is not limited by any one part of view of the universe. It's very comprehensive in its overall philosophy. Fuller's another one who yeah. tied into that and some of the other intellectuals. So, and so it's a major it's a major contribution now. Mm -hmm. We ought to talk a little bit about it if we can. It was I wanted to by, continue on that on okay, that train. Go where I was continue, to but find let's the, get down to, to the, the terms. Term. That fellow down in Florida and mm -hmm. the is yeah, absolutely. Area? So yeah. The, the terms, the, the zeitgeist movement. So yeah. that, now we have a very clear understanding of what zeitgeist means. But that word movement tends to be misunderstood as well. So there's this idea that maybe there's like a billion people who are just pushing, you know, at, or screaming at walls or institutions or something like mm -hmm. that, and that's what movement implies, but that's not necessarily the way that we, we use the term. The okay, movement, yeah, yeah. what we mean is a change. Yeah. An adjustment, okay, yeah. a moving forward. Because there yeah. are certain things that are embedded in the zeitgeist that yeah. are 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 a harmful or detrimental yeah. to human progress yeah. and human evolution right. and things that can result in the determination, the, the early termination of our species yeah. if we don't, you know, take certain things into mind realize, in the way that we think re about it. Realize, Bacardi, the, the, the termination of our species is very real now yeah. in a way that it never has been mm -hmm. throughout the whole Homo sapien experience. Mm -hmm. We've only crossed that line where we have weapons. As one of the things I pointed out, um, I said that we have the capability to feed ourselves and the capabilities to destroy ourselves. The That's species. an unprecedented. Yeah, we've never had the ability historically. We wipe out the, wipe out the other tribe mm -hmm. or wipe out a whole bunch of people and everything or famine and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But we didn't have the ability. And the only thing it seems to me that does have that capability is the uh, weapon systems that have evolved as part of the extended consciousness of tools and technology. And here's a unique the negative part of this. side of the technological, yeah. and the technological also provides the ability mm -hmm. to transcend scarcity as an ontologic reality it's for, a the unique human, for the human society, all of the human society, plus uh, taking into it an ecological context. Mm -hmm. That's it's a unique um, trait that's a part of that uh, that Moore's law curve that yeah. Ray Kurzweil talks yeah, about yeah. The, the law of diminishing returns see, that he also talks about. Do you see Bacardi? one of these? Yeah, go ahead. The, the, as we get to the miniaturization and yeah. the formalization of certain the technologies, as this starts as this starts to happen, more, yeah. we can take. This this also applies to weaponry. Yeah. You know, this isn't this oh, isn't yeah, like yeah. Buck. Buckminster Fuller talked about the positives on the living room side. Yeah, yeah. But this also applies to weaponry. So. A kid inside of his, you know, apartment can build a weapon system, you know, that's yeah. this small. Yeah. You know, it, it's, 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 before it used to be big factories yeah. and military yeah. systems yeah. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. lots of coordination yeah. and all yeah. that. But people can build devices that cause great amount of destruction. Yeah, yeah. And it's, that is also a part of the technological curve True. that causes yeah. pos possibilities and the possibilities are true possibilities. Yeah. Possibility is not necessary. We use it in such a positive, affirming way, but yeah. it can be a negative term. Oh, and this is what we. This yeah. is what this movement is trying to bring you mean the, the, more of more of a consciousness to. Yeah. Is that we have technologies and 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 abundance making 
materials that exist. That's one but side. That would be the side of a positive side. Exactly. The positive side and on, on, the, on, on the, negative the negative side, we have a whole bunch of negative values yeah. that are embedded into our society. Yeah. They're embedded inside of yeah. them. And we need to move these detrimental values aside. Mm -hmm. We need to accelerate past those, whatever way that we can, mm -hmm. whether it's through communication, whether it's through having conversations, whether mm -hmm. it's to having conversations with our fellow man, whether yeah. it's ascending to levels of power and uh. informing people through those, either it's using your own corporations or your institutions mm -hmm. to, to do better you know, corporate yeah. social responsibility yeah. initiatives or whatever it is, yeah. but yeah. we need to start to change or challenge these values very openly and yeah. discuss them on, on yeah. root cause levels. Yeah. If, it's, if the root cause of a, of a certain problem that we're dealing with sociologically yeah. has to deal with our relationships in between our environment or the, the things that we have or the yeah. things that we don't have, yeah. then we need to figure out ways to make sure that people get these types of things so we no longer have these fights. Mm -hmm. If people are about to have fights over water, when water, uh, uh, when, when uh, I think, uh, that's another thing, it's so funny to name drop Peter Diamandis so much, mm -hmm. um, he, he pointed this out in his TED talk that when Carl Sagan turned the Voyager around mm -hmm. and he pointed it and he took a picture of what the planet looked like, mm -hmm. he called it something very unique, he called it a little blue ball and the yeah. reason he called it a little blue ball is because our planet is 70 percent water you know it's yeah. 70 percent so if we're about to have a fight yeah. over the most abundant resource yeah. that exists right. on the planet yeah. there's something that's a value problem uh -huh. it's, it's something that's embedded into not merely cultural not merely social not yeah. merely political but uh -huh. combined inside yeah, of this yeah. this is the demystified Again, term thinking. this system. is the demystified term of yeah. zeitgeist zeitgeist yeah. is a very very powerful cultural, social, political, uh, economic term that can that 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 takes a lot of these interesting ideas and 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 brings them together. Yeah. And then that word movement is talking about changing that. Yeah, we yeah. won't want to see mm -hmm. we don't it's not merely a technological uh, utopianist, you know, masturbatory exercise yeah. where we want to say, you know, we, we want to see these machines take over yeah. the society or we want to see a cybernated leisure society as I've seen one person write. It's not merely that. It's the idea that there are values that exist in the society that we need to challenge. Yeah. And, and, and it doesn't come from us challenging uh, institutions by, like, you know, running up to whatever organization, whether it's Monsanto or whatever, yeah. whatever that organization is that we think is doing bad things because I, I, I associate this, I, I associate the problems very uh, very linearly. So in terms of, uh, I see the abstraction between somebody trying to make money doing one thing and somebody trying to make money the other way. Yeah. I don't see too much difference that they're both ex exercising in a profit motive. They're still exercising in the same ways. So if I'm going to yell at one institution, if I'm going to yell at Monsanto, it doesn't make sense for me not to yell at the guy who's selling hot dogs on the corner. To me, the level of abstraction is not that big of a difference. Mm. However, yeah. I want to challenge what is causing the person at Monsanto to create genetically modified foods that may or may not be bad for us, yeah. or the person who's doing shortcuts on making his hot dogs, yeah. because those shortcuts are very much a part of the same you know, train of thought. They're both yeah. are connected. We need to challenge that, that yeah. frame of thought that makes people have to behave in scarcity-driven ways, or ways that, um, that are come well, from that scarcity background. Yeah, well, it comes from scarcity background that has been the reality. Yeah. That's been the reality. Yeah. And that's the problem. And now, but, it's but changing. now we're changing. Exactly. Yeah. Our capabilities are making, are catching up, or, excuse me, our ambitions, our ambitions to take care of everyone. And I, cause I, honestly, I honestly don't believe that there are people out there who just want to destroy the world. Yeah. And I, I think this was talked no. about in, Ish, in the book Ishmael. Yeah. Um, he says, uh, one of the characters acts as another character. He says, uh, who are the people yeah. who are on the planet who just hell-bent on the destruction of the planet? They yeah. just don't want human society to exist at all. And, he, and the, the character responded, I don't think there are. And he said, yet every single day, every single one of you contributes in some way, some measure to the destruction of the planet. And you know it, you, you know it deep right here, you know it as you're doing your behavior that mm. you're contributing to the destruction of the planet. Mm. So why don't you change? Mm. And he didn't have an answer for it. I think the movement has an answer. I think the movement has, has the, a, exactly. I th yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah, and, and it starts, it starts with first identifying the values. First, okay. identify those, 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 those values that are causing the destruction, causing the problems. Don't Get into, involved in. I, I, Jack Fresco talks about this. Yeah, he says Jack Fresco was the fellow who was associated yeah. with the beginning. So of Jack it. Fresco in the is, beginning of this, he, he was associated with. I don't. Present. I don't think about it as that linearly. You I think of. Linear, I think of huh? people as a part of the overall train of thought that is that is that 
either emerges or doesn't emerge, right? So First thing you have I, you have people like Jock Fresco who as a result of the platform that he received, he was able to spread his information out more broadly and more people were able to attch on to it. Also but did he it had influence an early film twenty years ago or something. He had a mm -hmm. film out that had a locomotive and everything. It was very effective. Mm -hmm. And he was building that movement. I associated with Florida. Yeah. And that he was a founder, and there was a woman associated with um, him? So, Jock Fresco and his uh, associate, Roxanne Meadows, right, they both right. live in Venus, Florida, and that's where the namesake of their and organization... And they go back 20 years or so. No, they go back much longer More than 20 longer. years. That's they what I mean, started, way back. Um, they, he and that was initially the started with an organization that, that he founded called socio Cybernering, which um, had intellectual ramification, um, intellectual um, uh, connection to the technocracy movement of the 1930s. Okay, right. He was very yeah. much involved in the, um, the technocracy movement. So I've movement. got him then, associated with the beginning of the Zeitgeist. Now, in Am terms I of in or terms, not? Was in he terms a of founding father, in terms of uh, it's it's not that it's not that connected. Well, in, you get. You have to take the frame of an organization away from when you think of the Zeitgeist movement. So the movement is not there's no there's no center, there's no um, there's no board of trustees, mm -hmm. there's nowhere for anybody to work. No, there's no there's none of that exists. So so for instance, even in the um, in the title um, that says member of the Zeitgeist movement yeah. when when it when yeah. it shows up, yeah, here, yeah, right? yeah, even that is sort of flawed because yeah. I'm not a member of the Zeitgeist movement. Mm -hmm. I'm a part of the Zeitgeist movement. Yeah. If I, we all are a part of the Zeitgeist movement. Every individual who exists on the planet is a part of the Zeitgeist. Oh, well, that, uh, part of the Zeitgeist, you but not the Zeitgeist and, movement. And the, the movement, Zeitgeist the movement, movement is different the than movement, the Zeitgeist. Yeah. The movement is merely the group of individuals who have decided that they want to change right. the the values that exist within the side of But it. didn't he want that? No, there are plenty of others. And, the and, that's, film, and that's, the main, that's the reason why I brought up in individuals like Jack, uh, excuse me, uh, Jesus Christ and Gandhi and Martin Luther King, because these are individuals who wanted yeah, to change yeah, things. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, these people yeah, are yeah. part of that movement. And there's always that, uh, um, I think, I think it may have been a McMurtry. Uh, John McMurtry is the, the author of a book. It's called The Cancer Stage of Capitalism. Mm. He talks about there are always these little immune system responses to problems. He, he, he thinks of capitalism as a part. He thinks of the human. He, he, he uses the analogy to, to make uh, capitalism a, a, cancerous, a cancerous problem. Yeah, there's yeah. a cancerous problem within capitalism. Yeah. And he thinks about the problem of the, of the cells, world yeah. using it as sort of a, uh, as sort of a body analogy. Yeah, right? right? And he says that. There is always this immune reaction to a cancer. There's always, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And those are individuals. And to be fair, capitalism didn't exist in Jesus' time. No. And that's why we're talking about the values. Mm -hmm. So some people may mischaracterize the Zeitgeist movement as an anti-capitalist mm -hmm. movement. It's not mm -hmm. anti-capitalist. No, no. If capitalism worked, if mm -hmm. capitalism made sure that, like in the words that Buck Mr. Fuller said, 100% uh -huh. of humanity was taken care of yeah. without ecological offense and through spontaneous cooperation without the disadvantage of anyone, if that that's was... That's a great mission yeah, statement, isn't if, it? If yeah, that yeah. was the way capitalism operated, yeah, yeah. then the movement would be the biggest proponent of that yeah. because that's a part of the value that accelerates positive possibilities right, for everyone right. on the planet. Yeah, right. But we realize that there are certain things that are embedded into whatever organization, whatever system that we, whatever yeah. social system, whatever political system, whatever it is, it's yeah. embedded inside of it. Whatever those things are, the movement is not necessarily anti, but it wants to move past those values. We yeah. need to move past that. Maybe those things that we've inherited out of history, if we're coming to a time of uh, that uh, chart of folders again, and Fresco uh, was tied with the kind of thinking of Fuller, futurist and systems thinking, mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the turn of the 19th century, there were people born that were beginning to think that way. Yeah. But when you get to that, then time Things are being done, so you have instant. Like for instance, uh, for a thousand years after Rome, there was a, a system in the European continent, anyway, and mirrors of it around the world and so forth, where political legitimacy or legitimacy for the authority was vested in hereditary families, mm -hmm. uh, kings. Mercantilism. Yeah, well, not that. mercantilism no, 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 so uh, much. That's the economic theory. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But you're the, right. The, the the basis of it was uh, hereditary families. Yes. Yeah. And then that would come down, and that went for mm -hmm. a thousand years. Yeah. And they finally got down and said, the divine right of kings. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they made a revolution. And then you have people like John Locke then, who, who then, revolted against Then you got John those. Locke, you got natural law, you got the steam engine, you got yeah. the beginning of a thing. You got a political revolution in the United States across the ocean. Mm -hmm. The people in Paris were all comfortable within the old way, mm -hmm. and they thought, what are these bumpkins across there making a change? Yeah. So they're making a change. So what you have to do is have, if you're going to have a major change that has all these institutions that reify 
reestablish the old established order for which is the natural inclination to be associated with them, mm -hmm. just behaviorally or something mm -hmm. like that, those institutions would have to be either in a dialectical materialism mm -hmm. where it'd be overthrown and then a new thing established, or they are going to have to be subsumed mm -hmm. within a larger organization so that you can get something where 100% of humanity, including the people responsible mm -hmm. for the outdated institutions without overthrowing mm -hmm. or knocking off or mm -hmm. something like that in a way, uh, they'd have to be included as well. So yeah. it includes 100% of humanity. Mm -hmm that is available only when you get to the point where you have transcended, perhaps, the scarcity over which the people were fighting yeah. in terms of intellectual understanding of the larger process, and we may be at that, that time now. Yeah. And, I think, and I think that's very two, important. 10,000 yeah. generations, this may be the defining mm -hmm. generation that we've been born into. Mm -hmm. No? No, you're absolutely right. Evolutionarily. I mean, that's something that there's hardly any thinking and, along and those terms. But that you would to me subsume is, the old. That to me is then, the biggest. And then have it transformation made so to include everybody, including the people who are the supposed enemies of progress mm -hmm. or holding it up. You understand? Yeah, I, I think that's the that's big. That's comprehensive. I think that's the big challenge of my generation. Uh, Our and generation. Other, and, and, and when I mean. We're I, different generations. No, no, I understand. Yeah, yeah. What I mean is. But I mean, when I use my generation, I mean, yeah. you know, 20 year olds, 30 year olds yeah, yeah, who are yeah. growing up, yeah. who are coming to the knowledge of, you know, what we're, t what we're discussing, whether it's, the, whether it's through the zeitgeist movement, whether it's through yeah. whatever, whatever political or socialist, like for instance, I was- Well, zeitgeist is beyond political. It's very, it's very, 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 it's very, very systemic. Very beyond, it's systemic. very beyond. And, yeah. and that to me, yeah. that's another factor that's very important. I'm happy, you, I'm happy you challenged that. It's time for us to stop thinking in terms of politics merely. That's all you, you know hear in the news now. It's you all know. we hear, you but it's time for us to news? stop thinking about that merely. You know, it's, to me, it's but not... But you don't to, understand. Yeah, that's what we hear That's the news what we're bombarded, all the time. Yeah, with, bombarded right. with. And that, to me, goes back to the autodidacticism yeah. that's very important for yeah. people to step into, whether or not you're already within college, whether or not mm. you're outside of college, whether or not you're older or younger, whatever. I think people need to take the opportunity to study on their own and, and, uh, and remove themselves from the... And, I, and, it's not, and it's not to say that you don't understand what's going on. It's not yeah, to say yeah, that you remove yeah. yourself you look from at the real the society. Eye, but you, you look at it with but, the jaundice. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what they're reporting on the news is mm -hmm. being the so-called reality. Yeah. Yeah. If you, yeah. So the, There's a broader reality beyond that in which those... Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. Continue yeah. on. Continue no, on. that's all. That's all I wanted to say. That's what I wanted to say. So... Yeah. Um, and so you're you're doing okay, and and okay, that's really good. I regret, but I think it's a major thing to be supported. This mm -hmm. idea, the zeitgeist, is, and the people that are associated with it, and it's growing, yeah. right? And you do you're doing some radio or something, or you? I do um, I do a weekly podcast where I bring um, different different scholars onto the show. Right yeah. now. Um, in terms of who have I brought on thus far. So I brought Bill McKibben onto my oh, show. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Um, that was a really good conversation yeah, where I'll we bet. talked about um, the energy return on Andrea Invested. Uh, to me, that's really where economy starts at. We have to discuss the thermodynamic constraints that happen within uh, within society. Uh, okay. that, that, that those things are the fundamentals. And then all of our other stuff builds off, well, off, off of that. Well, that. Uh, Bill McKibben saw that, yeah, and yeah. He, he discussed that at, at, at length with me. But he were also also discussing really climate change and the, and the challenges yeah. that are coming to that. Right, right. right now, the UN is seeing that as their number one problem. They are they recognizing, really? You think it is? Yeah. In terms of UNDP, excuse me, yeah. I shouldn't have said the UN. The UNDP yeah, is starting UNDP. to see that as yeah, a very, very, very huge problem, yeah. number one challenge to development in terms of the international level. I'm starting to be much more concerned about the international politics, mm -hmm. the international domestic problems that are happening. Yeah. Inter international domestic, that's a good word. Yeah. <laughs> but the international problems that are yeah. happening uh, and, and uh, uh, my my concern really is with Africa. Really, um, the the challenges that are happening to those within those countries huge, is, yeah. is very very yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah. Um, and climate change is very much a part of the problems of of development um, within those within those places. Yeah. Um, and your podcast is it a regular time or how does it work? Uh, so yeah. I'm a part of how long of, is it? How long does it go? I'm a part of the Zeitgeist Movement's yeah. blog talk radio show. Blog talk blog radio, talk radio show. show. It's okay. a part. Uh, it's a it's it's a whole host of us. So there's yeah. members like Ben, um, ben McLeish, there's uh, James Phillips, there's Peter Joseph himself, there's mm. uh, Jason Lord who does a really good shows. Um, who else? Uh, even 
Eva. There's a bunch of different people. And these people. are all podcasts? Is that it? Or They're all we'll, podcasts. We yeah. all do these How things. How does that over work? There. How does it work? Um, yeah. So some of us, so for instance, me, yeah. when, I, when I took Bill McKibben or when I met with, yeah, that's uh, a big name, yeah. I did uh, pr uh, the president of the Institute of General Semantics. His okay. name is Martin Levinson. Um, I interviewed Jock Fresco. Yeah. Um, I've done a lot of different interviews with a lot of different people. Right. Uh, right now, I'm in the process of trying to get one huge name. I'll bring that up. I might bring that up later. What? But I've been uh, auditing his class. Uh, uh, actually, I'm in Dr. Dr. West's class, uh, Cornell West's class, and I might be. I might be. This is this is much. Probably this might happen. I might be able to get him on the show, which would be really cool because he's a democratic socialist with you know, similar concerns about the world that I have. Yeah, um, he and so, Tavis Smiley are doing great stuff yeah, they're about doing great poverty. Stuff. They're yeah. calling attention to, to me, poverty. To me, I, poverty I think it's wonderful. It's just it's disgusting. The number, yeah, that's the, poverty. the number one issue for me is poverty. Forty-eight percent of the people yeah. it was in the news, little news clip today. Forty-eight percent of the people in New York are under or very near what is called officially the poverty. Yeah, half the population. Yeah. Now, again, it's interesting to me I mean, thinking about... I mean, that's what the thing said. I couldn't believe it. That was it's a, interesting such a high percentage. We as Americans uh, are... It's going, and the trends are not good. Yeah. The, under the political class... In, in, um, terms of, in terms of us as Americans, when we think about poverty, I, I'm, very, I'm, I'm starting to become less... I, I less emphasize the problems of poverty within America, even though they're horrifying and tragic, right? Yeah. Horrifying and tragic. I get, why are you less, I get, why? I get sort of... I, I have a sort of revulsion that happens to me uh, when I see homeless people on the street. There's, it's a pain that I feel, Absolutely. especially when I walk uh, when I walk past, yeah. and I see other people are walking past, and I'm unsure of whether or not I'm the the jerk for walking past this guy, yeah. or if the other person is a jerk, or if they're all having the same experience of that sort of hopeless feeling of yeah. not being able to help, right. not knowing if we should help. Yeah, not, but it's all not only the things. person is absolutely hopeless, but the people that are under desperate conditions of absolute existential yeah. fear that they're going to be or something, and that threat yeah. is being brought down on people yeah. as a means of social control, which yeah. is really disgusting yeah. and fascistic. And that's, and, and that, while I de-emphasize in terms of my mind the problems of American poverty, I still recognize them. However, Why I do realize, Why I do realize the, 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 uh, the variation in terms of what poverty means worldwide and yeah. what relative poverty means in America. So okay. relative poverty in America means you have a microwave, a fridge, a telephone, a TV, a, big a bed, TV. yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah. have you have food in your well, fridge, uh, yeah. you have you know whatever is coming to you. You still have certain things. Yeah. You just don't have some of the, a lot of the luxuries that happen now. While that relative poverty, there are still definitely a many people who are at the bottom oh, of I that. Where, yeah. where like a, yeah. like I was discussing, you people get people who are on a dollar a day. Exactly, you know, and those the they're world. here yeah. in America. A lot right of those, America, some of those, and when I say a dollar a day, I mean mm. some people who are not. Just yeah. not existing yeah, in right. terms of the political well, and yeah. economic system. They're yeah. here in America too, yeah. but I de-emphasize their problems because I think about the world. Mm -hmm. You know, the problems yeah. of the fact that within this conversation, yeah. if we counted this by seconds, yeah. how many children have died yeah, for yeah. senseless yeah. reasons yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. that we've yeah. already solved? Yeah, I you know? see. And degree, again, it, yeah. So when I think degree. of so when I think of the poverty, I think yeah. of the way in which the or, uh, international organizations are trying to challenge challenge these problems and bring light to those problems and off and also hope that other or other oh, people I, get involved now again going back to the beginning of this conversation when yeah. i was a group home kid foster kid um growing up in connecticut in new york uh the problems of the of the world didn't matter to me mm. the problems were mostly Getting what was his, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah problems yeah and then the mm. movement opened my eyes to the international level i have friends now who are in macedonia i have real like i have friends who who are in many different places around the world and whatever happens to them also happens to me in terms of just in terms of the communication revolution that's happening. People yeah. who we now have you know, true fellowship with who yeah. are outside of our borders. You're doing of our that borders. cybernetically? Or we that can do that. You can do it cybernetically, yeah. but I've met a lot of people. Okay. I, for instance, Federico is a good friend of mine. He lives yeah. in Italy. Yeah. He was in New York City maybe three weeks ago, okay. and we sat down, had dinner, had a great conversation, met again. I mean, and these are, these are, 
relationships that I'm building, okay. even outside of just the the connection mm -hmm. that I have face to face with a lot of different people. So, what's the way. main way in which the zeitgeist, uh, whether it's movement or the people involved, are communicating out to get uh, the grow? Are more and more people associated with it? Is similar to the way you're doing? Are there more uh, communications vehicles? Are in terms there of television, they, multimedia, yeah. how are people getting the word? And in terms of the, like names, is there a structure that's relevant mm -hmm. in terms of like an institutional structure mm -hmm. and how is it uh, faring in terms the whole of thing? in terms of name uh i don't see many nationally people nationally and internationally yeah internationally and and um i don't see many people who are like holding up uh the zeitgeist movement flyers yeah. on like you know national television or whatever if that's mm -hmm. the measure in which we determine what is you know ex the acceleration is yeah but what i am seeing is the ideas yeah. that we're discussing and the challenges that we're bringing going hitting people who were who, who you would least expect it yeah. so for instance just a couple of days ago somebody told me that uh ozzy from uh the, the rock group he's he's a he's a rock mm -hmm. musician uh ozzy something he used to have a television show on uh, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. he has a um album coming out and um, one of the tracks on his album is called Zeitgeist, oh, and, well, it, and apparently yeah. it's discussing some of the the topics that we're we're discussing in his mm. music. And yeah. these are people you would least expect to yeah. you know yeah. bump into this information so just it's, it's, slightly. The net so, is being so cast in terms wider. of the, the, yeah. the net is very wide. Uh, yeah. It's just not. Some people may not walk up to you and say, "Oh, hey, uh, I want to discuss cybernetics and socio cybernetics and its effect on human behavioral biology." Yeah. Yeah. You know with you on the street but internally they know well the federal reserve system and fractional reserve banking which i wasn't taught in high school yeah. i was never taught fractional reserve banking no, in high school. i, know, I wasn't I taught fractional reserve yeah. banking at, at, at morehouse college uh, yeah. uh, but i know about it i know yeah. the, the difficulties of it yeah. and that comes from my personal education as a result of being yeah. a member of the yeah. movement and it and, is and, and, yeah. who, and who, it's very difficult for you to put your finger on it and say this is the person but that was the whole idea behind the movement okay. it wasn't to create an institution yeah. where we can say hey by membership we have 30,000, 300,000, 5 million yeah, members. That, yeah. It's more of the, the challenge intellectually. Yeah. Are you waking up and are you able to communicate this peer, uh, without, without any, there's right. no one standing over my shoulder right. feeding me notes into my yeah. ears, but other people who have just taken the opportunity to learn this and then communicate this to their fellow man and is find it, other people who share those ideas. It's generically autodidactic, respectful of. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so forth. It's really, so listen, thanks. It's so good talking yeah, to you. Always. always it's really good to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Good to catch up and everything like that. And it's something that I have a general sense of respect and, uh, you know, sympathy for yeah. what you. they're trying to do because it resonates with the person that inspires me, mm -hmm. uh, Bucky Fuller and the things yeah. that are around the Fuller Institute and that sort of thing. And it's so good that there are these movements. And I think it's still good for us every once in a while to remind ourselves that we've been born into an incredibly transformative moment in the evolution of universal consciousness. And thanks a lot for coming in and sharing that with us and everything. No problem. And in the audience, we'd like to thank you for viewing. It's been your pleasure. But there it is, Batari Pace. Remember, he says it's a little bit more uh, nuanced than that, but remember the Zeitgeist Movement. And he's author of a book, Enough for All, Forever, which yeah. I love the title of because it bespeaks transcending scarcity and some of the uh, negative things that James Joyce had Daedalus say is the nightmare. Uh, history is a nightmare from which we're attempting to awaken. A movement zeitgeist is helping to bring the awakening. And I thank you very much for all that work. So good to see you. Thank you. Okay, thank you for viewing. We'll be coming back again tomorrow. Thank you very much.